Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com That is my website where all of my stuff is, well, a lot of my stuff is on available to stream for free and download for free and uh, you can also send me a PayPal gift if you want as well it's Jason, what is it, paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland or just go to the website, there's a link there um, this is Let Me Bore You To Sleep please only listen when you can safely close your eyes hope that you're well, hope you're happy hope you're, I don't know, sleeping or able to allow me to bore you to sleep with my incredibly exciting tone. So I thought today is I would uh, tell a story. It's a story of a, a little boy. And... Uh, Called in. What should we call him? Bob. So his name is Bob. And he was basically had two older brothers when he was born. And doesn't really remember much about the birth thankfully and uh, I think he his only recollection was he was just glad to get out of there <laughs> and uh, then when he went to school for the first day high school he thought oh now I want to go back didn't like high school but anyway when he was seven he left where he was living with his two brothers and he went to a little town and he went to live with his father whom he didn't actually really know very well and his father's wife who he didn't actually really know very well because she wasn't his mother but she was his father's wife but he didn't really know his father very well because he hadn't really up to the age of just before seven didn't, hadn't really met him you know so really they were both kind of equally as new to little Bobby let's call him Bobby it's easier little Bobby and his two older brothers um, I forget their names but they, they went with him to this place and it was really strange the very first day when they went there to live he was told "Ooh, you're never going to have to go back to that other place again at first he thought his, they meant you know he's uh, the place he was born from and they said no no not that how old are you seven how do you know about stuff like that and he showed them a picture that he drew and they thought oh that's a bit weird what kind of school do you go to and he drew another picture uh, and they started to think I wonder if he can talk can Bobby talk or is it just pictures all the time pictures all the time and then Bobby, Bobby said, yeah, no, I, I can talk. And uh, the parents, because he, he embraced the idea of calling this new lady mummy and calling this new man daddy, even though he was his daddy biologically. Uh, so he kind of embraced that because he liked the idea. It seemed like a nice seemed like a nice thing you know like oh I remember 
Bobby was sitting there one day thinking, yeah, that'd be nice. I want to call them mummy and daddy rather than just uh, the new parents. Because, you know, he didn't know how long it was going to last. But uh, he thought he'd give it a go, you know, give it a go. So it was the year 1977 and it was the summer. And it was an awfully hot summer because the sun was out and the temperature was high, which caused a feeling of warmness in the air and therefore people were going around sweating and going oh isn't it hot isn't it hot everyone was just walking around and banging into each other going oh isn't it hot yeah it's never been this hot before it's the hottest day since 1963 I said no I don't know I think 1976 last year was hotter oh no I don't think so ah oh, but don't you remember the those uh, ladybirds everywhere and they said, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. How could you forget about the ladybirds? <laughs> and they laughed. And they just held hands and skipped away and went for a big swim. So Bobby, he used to walk down the road with uh, the new parents and his two brothers. And they'd walk to the seafront. And it was ever so nice because... Uh, it was a seafront and there was sea and he liked the sea because previously before he'd moved there he'd lived in a place where there was sea and it made him feel comfortable he had this real feeling of oh not sure if I like it here then he sees the sea and he's like oh okay feels a little bit familiar and he looks up at the sky. Oh, we've got a sky as well. That's nice. When is the temperature? Oh, I hope they've got water here and food. Yeah, he was very inquisitive and a bit over worrying. So, so he got his checklist out. So he wanted to check. Was that a little pad with a little checklist of things that needed to be done? And because he was only seven, there wasn't really a lot to do. You know, just make sure you wipe properly. And just, I don't know, moan a bit, run around aimlessly, roll around on the sand, jump into puddles, you know, things like that, that it's sometimes easy to forget, isn't it, when you're seven? So I used to have a little checklist. And, uh, it was around that time that he started his um, his hit list as well. So anyone that you know, annoyed him or crossed him, he'd put their names down. By the time he got to 10, it was up to about 4,000 names. Yes. He's very vindictive. Oh, I never let anything go. So he was, uh, one day he was walking down the beach, he decided to go on his own. So he snuck out of the house and uh, he climbed, climbed through the cat flap because he was only little and uh, didn't understand why there was a cat flap there because they didn't have a cat. But later he found out that actually they put it there so that he could escape, hoping that you know, he'd run away so they could save a bit of money on food. They all laughed about that when they, when he suddenly found out one day in, in his thirties, during a Christmas celebration, and he decided to go for a nice little stroll. Now he didn't call it a stroll because he was seven. He didn't really name it. It wasn't really, uh, it wasn't a planned activity in his book. It wasn't a to do. You know, wasn't on his to-do list. But he did decide to write a diary about it. And uh, occasionally, if it was really kind of, you know, things were going quite well or there was some 
emotional element to that particular activity, he may write a poem about it. And uh, that made him feel lovely, like almost like having a, a cheese and tomato sandwich when you're really hungry. Yeah, that kind of feeling. It was a feeling of fulfillment that can only come from a cheese and tomato sandwich when you're really hungry or a bread roll before dinner you know in a restaurant I don't know what they put in those bread rolls in restaurants but they're, they're addictive they're just I prefer the bread rolls more than the actual meal I've never had a meal that tasted better than the bread rolls ever isn't it strange and uh, Bobby just said to me, can you get on with the story, please? It's about me, not you. Uh, I'm trying to explain to him, it's all about me. He said, no, it's not, it's about me. Bobby, can you talk about the story, please? And I said, yeah, okay, okay. So, Bobby went for this walk, went down the, basically as you get out the cat flap, walk down to the end of the path, and there was a gate, but the gate didn't work. I mean, it worked, but it didn't. You know, it, it closed, but it didn't close shut. We, as far as the, you know, the little handle thing that you push and pull up and down in order to open and close it. Well, it just, it was stuck. It was uh, not frozen, what's the, the equivalent to frozen, but not ice, not water, but metal. Well, it's rusty. It was rusted, uh, so it was it was metal fro metally frozen, rusted. And he, but so he just opened it. Although he could have probably climbed through one of the holes because he was only about two centimeters long. But you know, he he liked. He wanted to be an adult. He wanted to be an adult. That's why he climbed through the cat flap because seen his dad do it on many occasions and he thought I want to give that a go I want to be just like my dad and uh, well, I don't know how I'm going to get the beard he thought because <laughs> his dad had a beard so he's walking down the road it was turned right out of the gate and it was all the way down and for him it was quite a journey because he only had tiny little legs. Huge upper body, like a giraffe, but tiny little legs. So he's walking towards the, um, well basically there was a train stop, like a, a railings where the, the train would go through and the barrier would go down. So that would sometimes uh, do that so he couldn't pass through but other times you could pass through which was good uh, I don't remember how many times he could pass through and how many times he couldn't pass through but eventually he could pass through anyway because he just needed to wait until the train had gone through and there'd be a little ding 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 like that and then the barriers would open again and he could walk through which was quite good because it meant you could get the other side. But it wasn't always in use. It wasn't always, always in use. It was in use sometimes, but then sometimes it was, wasn't in use at all. Um, but there used to be someone working on there um, who would manually close the gates. So it's a very... Um, yeah, very uh, health and safety aware, considering it was 1977, because generally health and safety hadn't been invented at that point. So he's walking through there and he happened to be able to get straight through because there were no trains. This might have been because it was a Sunday or it might have been because there was no trains. I'm not sure. I mean, it's the 70s, so there may have been a train strike. There was generally a strike about something in the 70s. In fact, I think some of the strikers actually went on strike 
of being on strike. So they they picketed against themselves, which was a bit strange. And so he's walking, doing the odd little skip, as you would. And then, oh, he he got to the road and he had to cross the road, but he wasn't allowed to cross the road. And he started thinking, well, if I'm not allowed to cross the road, how am I supposed to get across the road? That's a bit of a, a difficult puzzle really isn't it or perhaps I just sort of said that's a bit of a puzzle because puzzles are supposed to be difficult and they're not supposed to be easy so yeah just the word puzzle probably would have done it was a puzzle it was a difficult puzzle it was an easy puddle puddle he liked puddles as well love jumping into the water we didn't like jumping into the water, but he wanted to be part of society. He wanted to wanted to fit in. And personally, he liked to keep his feet nice and dry. And uh, if he had his own way, he'd still be carried around, even at whatever age he might be now. Bobby, very lazy, always been lazy. See, so he wanted to be, he felt that he should have been born into royalty. When I say royalty, I mean real royalty, not, not, um, you know, like a real, a real prince, or whatever that might mean. Um, not someone that's like a prince of a field with a few little huts, just someone that's, got a palace and stuff like that and uh, just being catered on all the time not having to do anything for himself and it's just a shame he thought you know I remember well, when he was sitting on the beach one day he was thinking to himself he was writing down in his diary his thoughts and ponderings and he thought isn't it a shame that I've got to go through my whole life waiting till old age where I can have things done for me you know since the age of being a baby I pretty much had to start doing things for myself being a baby was great well sometimes it depends on whether or not the person that's looking after you can tell the difference between the different cries that you make. You know, one cry being, I want more food. One cry being, can you sit me up because I want to watch television. Another cry being, can you get rid of that man from this house because he's annoying me. Another cry being... Can you please go and have a wash? You stink worse than me. Another cry being, my nappy's full, empty it now. Another cry being, my nappy's full, but I'm okay with it. Yeah, lots of different cries meaning different things. Another cry being, I wish Andre would stop making noises and running around when I'm making a recording but of course we don't always get our wishes do we don't always get our own way no no not always so Bobby is walking down the beach I don't know where he's gone Andre is walking down the beach and uh, he came across a whale there was a whale on the beach and it had been uh, well, I guess it was sunbathing that's what he thought was sunbathing he said hello Mr. Whale the whale said hello 
He said, Bobby, my name's Bobby. He, well, I said, how, how would I know that? You say it like I should know your name. Why would I know your name? I've just been stranded, washed up on this beach. I don't even belong to this country. I've come from Australia, and now you're giving me giving me rubbish because I don't know what your name is. How would I know what your name is? And Bobby said, "Look, calm down, man. What's what's with what's your beef? What's going on? Why why are you, why are you giving me the evils? Why what's, why are you being like this?" And the whale said, oh, "I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just." It's been an awful day. I say, well, Bobby said, what, what? Well, what's happened? He said, well, I got stranded on a beach. That's what happened. He said, you get, you're getting angry again. He said, yeah, I know. I can't help it. And that's partly why I ended up on my own. Because uh, I was with all these people and, well, other whales. And... They kept saying that I was a moaner. I mean, personally, I don't, I don't really agree with them because I think there's a difference between moaning and having a social commentary. But commenting socially on what's happening, it's different, isn't it? It's a different thing. And Bobby said, I've got no idea what you're talking about. I mean, I thought you was a well. Aren't you supposed to go, ooh, ooh. The whale said, what, what, what was that? Well, it was whale sound. Whale songs. Whale songs? Let me tell you something, mate. We whales do not sing. We communicate. We don't sing. Do you sing to each other to communicate, you humans? Bobby said, sometimes. When? Um, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. Well, why don't you have the answer? Because I'm not reading off a script and I don't know what I'm going to say next. I don't have the answer for every single thing that you ask. Yeah, but technically you're asking yourself. So why don't you have the answer before you ask the question? Well, the fact is I didn't know I was going to ask the question. Well, how about asking a question you know what the answer is to? It. Well, yeah, that do make sense. However, dibbly dibbly do, I I can't always plan what words are going to um, squirt out of my out of my tongue. Squirt out of your tongue? That doesn't even make sense. Yeah, I know. I know, but... Yeah, it doesn't, does it? Squirt out of your tongue. No, that is, that is a bit strange. Yeah, that is a bit strange. Squirting out your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so he's talking to the whale where I was saying, so... What are you up to then, Bobby? Bobby said, why do you know my name? He said, really? Yeah, I didn't didn't tell you my name. He said, you did at the beginning of this conversation, this long, drawn-out, boring, pointless conversation that is not helping me get off the beach. And Bobby said, well, you want to get off the beach? Well, if you don't want to get off the beach, why would you get on the beach? The way I looked at him, well, he would have looked at him, but he couldn't. But he, you know, he would have. He turned his eyes in Bobby's general direction. And he said, you don't half wind me up. What do you mean, wind you up? I'm just asking you a 
question. You're asking me a question. Yeah, no, I'm asking you a question. The world said, I know, that's what you said. You, you're asking me a question. No, I'm asking you a question. Yeah, asking him. Asking me. <laughs> and he said, I don't know what's going on here, do you? I said, no. I'm just trying out different ways of speaking. He said, why? Why do you have to try it out on me? I'm stranded on the um, tier on the, the beach and Bobby said no it's my turn to speak I'm the one that says that yeah but you're not stranded are you I said no but I'm the one that was, it was my turn to speak because it doesn't make sense you saying or me saying no actually it's your turn to speak not mine oh, I'm confused now but it is confusing isn't it trying to do two characters in a, a story that hasn't been created yet a story that has no content and there's two people talking both got the same voice how's that supposed to work the whale said I know it's ridiculous why does he even do this this is just pointless and Bobby said I know I mean, he's trying to make out his Bobby. He's actually talking about himself, but he's just giving me a different name. The White House said, Oh, you've let the cat out of the bag there. He said, I haven't got a cat. I've got a cat flap, though. Why have you got a cat flap if you haven't got a cat? Listen, Whaley, Maley, mate. I don't know why there's no cat. I don't know why there's a cat flap. All I know is I've been moved here by the social services to come and live with my biological father and his new wife. All right, mate, just calm down. I'm just just making conversation. Why? Why what? Why are you making conversation? Well, what else am I supposed to do? We could try singing a song. Whales don't sing songs. I think you find they do. Whales don't sing songs. You do realise, Bobby, just repeating the same sentence doesn't change the facts and Bobby said no and Bobby said I forget I forgot whose turn it is to talk and the whale said it doesn't really matter no one's listening I mean who's going to follow this I mean, not follow it as in be next, but who's going to follow it? It's just, if the person speaking can't, can't follow what they're saying, how's anyone else supposed to follow it? Yeah, but what's the point in that, though? I mean, what, why would you spend an hour talking and telling a story that had no point, with no storyline, with no characters that really exist, one based upon his own childhood which had nothing to do with the story anyway the cat flap didn't exist he wasn't you know he's oh but the whale did didn't it the whale existed ah said the whale now that starts to make sense a bit so if you're telling me said the whale if you're telling me that Bobby is actually the person who's speaking, that's like him as a child, but with a different name, you, Bobby, and I'm the whale, and there was actually a whale. So this isn't really a made-up story, apart from the bits that are made up. Ah, said Bobby. Do you want some ice cream? And the whale said, not really. 
what I would prefer is uh, getting back into the sea. <laughs> you know, whales aren't famous for eating ice cream. Perhaps watch a documentary once in a while. You know what, mate? That was a bit sarcastic. I was just being generous. Bobby said. All right, sorry, sorry, Bobby. I just you just wind me up. You really get on my nerves. <laughs> I know we've only just met, but um, honestly, if if I had a rolling pill pin, I would I would chuck it at you. What? That's a bit violent. Well, not necessarily a rolling pin, but just anything. Well, basically, if I had our, if I had, had our mark, in fact, that what are you trying to say? Bobby said, hoping that no one else had realised that the person speaking who just spluttered for no reason. What I'm, what I'm saying, the whale said, is if I had arms. You mean arms like in the Buddha's day where they'd go around with a bowl collecting arms, which was basically food for their, um, to eat, you know, because that was the, the, the Buddhist monks used to do that. He said, no, I don't mean arms in that, that way. I do you mean like weapons in war, that kind of arms. He said, no, I don't mean that either. Why would, why would, look, if I had arms, I'd just shoot you, wouldn't I? Now that's really violent, that's really violent. Well, actually, I'd just shoot a bow and arrow, probably. Hit you with me Tommy Hawk. Tommy Hawk? Is that such a thing? Look, I, I offered you an ice cream, didn't I? Yeah. Well, I think it's a bit rude of you when someone offers you an ice cream to start talking about wanting to chuck stuff at them why well well let me think and Bobby got distracted by a seagull that only had one leg and although the seagull only had one leg he was hopping up and down on top of the whale and Bobby started laughing now the whale started to get a little bit self-conscious. He he started like looking in the mirror, thinking that maybe he had a bogey or, you know, a bit of uh, spinach in his teeth. And uh, Bobby said, "No, it's okay. Um, it's just there's a seagull <laughs> dancing on top of your head." And the whale said, a seagull, that bloody sea, I thought getting ripping its leg off would be enough to get rid of it, <laughs> he said that's rude, well I didn't, didn't actually, he's, he's, one of his legs got stuck in the uh, breathing hole and that's what happened, it wasn't my fault, I didn't mean it, you know. <sighs> Look, we've had a relationship for quite a while, me and Herbert, and we we like to do kinky things, and that's all it is. I don't want to go into it because you're just, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm seven. Perhaps you shouldn't go into it. Okay, fair enough. I forgot for a minute. Um, yeah, but we're 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 in a relationship. It, we've when adults are in a relationship, they some signs do disgusting stuff <laughs> um, oh you mean like chuck mud at each other yes Bobby that's exactly what I mean oh you mean like setting fire to a shed well that's not really disgusting is it depends who's in the shed <laughs> 
Well, that is disgusting. You're seven year old. Why are you coming out with stuff like that? And Bobby said, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I've had a very, um, I've had quite a, a busy life, you know. Seen a lot of stuff. And I'm not really the average seven year old. What what age would you give yourself then if you were if you were going to? Uh, probably about eight. Well, so you're like a wise eight year old then. The whale said. Bobby looked at him. He walked around, looked directly at his face. He said, "Listen, mate. You trying to push my buttons? You trying to wind me up?" You want some? Do you want some, son? Do you? Eh? I'll give it ya. I'll give it ya. You want some? And the whale said, no, don't, no, no, I'm not being rude or anything. I was just, I was just saying. He said, look, mate, if you wasn't stranded, and if you weren't a thousand times bigger than me, I would knock you out. And the whale said, you don't sound like a normal seven-year-old. And Bobby said, ah, see? And the world said that that doesn't really mean anything, just saying, ah, see, what, what, what does that mean? Well, it's kind of implied, isn't it? It's an implied message. What do you mean implied, asked the whale. And Bobby said, well... For some reason, Bobby knelt down on one knee. He'd do that sometimes. He'd, uh, he was quite an embarrassment for the family. So, but anyway, he'd, he's, he's just got down on one knee for some reason. Um, it caused him lots of problems in future relationships as an adult. Lots of miscommunication there. And, uh, he said, I'd like to read you a poem. And the whale said, Well, it's really nice of you, but you don't have to. And Bobby said, No, I'd really like to. And the whale said, Now, honestly, it's fine. You don't have to do that. And the whale, and uh, Bobby said, No, but I, I feel I need to. And the whale said, Please don't. And Bobby said, I think I I think I should. And the whale said, Okay, I'll put it a different way. If you do, start to read a poem to me. I'm gonna roll over onto you. And Bobby said, won't, won't you see I'll be jealous? And he said, that's just wrong. What I mean is I'm going to squash you so that you can't ever read another poem to anyone ever again. And Bobby said, that, this is getting a bit dark. This is, this is supposed to be a nice, happy story. And the whale said, OK, let's backtrack. You start off the story talking about moving away from a children's home to go and live with some new parents, with your brothers, at the age of seven, with a father you've never met before until the age of seven. And you go, you sneak out of a cat flap that was purposely put there in order for you to be able to sneak out and run away. Yeah? And then you come to the beach and start talking to a, a whale that's stranded on the beach. A beached whale, basically. That's what we call us. There's even a term for it. What part of this story is nice? Well, I did offer you an ice cream. Yeah, you did. And you also offered 
me a poem and I declined that as well for good reason well go on then well that is a reason I didn't want to hear it I don't eat ice cream I'm a whale plankton on a stick if you can get some of that I'll have that all day long what, what is it with plankton? What, what is it with you and plankton? That's what I eat, isn't it? Yeah, but it is other stuff to eat, you know. What well, I like plankton. Well, I like toffee pudding and ice cream, but I don't have it with every meal. But I like plankton. Yeah. Listen, mate, just saying yeah and talking about your own life experiences has got nothing to do with my life and it's not going to affect what I do. Why? Why? What's wrong with just being accepting about other people's differences? Wouldn't that be, you know, perhaps a, a way forward? Bobby said, I'm seven. I don't have to accept anyone's differences or be understanding or any of those things, not for a long time. Why is that then? It's just not expected. I mean, as it is, we're in the 70s. So, uh, it's you pretty much say whatever you want to whoever you want about whatever you want and not get in trouble well perhaps with the person but not societally the way I said what do you mean I said well the sitcoms if that are on now are dodgy they've got dodgy language dodgy politics dodgy everything stuff that you can never see in 30 years time Oh, but how do you know what's going to happen in 30 years time because it's a made up story by someone that's 49 oh yeah I forgot no you didn't forget how can you forget when you're the one talking what do you mean said the well well you're talk. I'm talking as Bobby yeah said the well and you just spoke as the well, yeah, but it's still me. And the well said, "Look, are you going through some kind of existential, you know, crisis or something? I mean, it's this is just complicated." And Bobby said, "Yeah, it is complicated, but it's okay because some things are complicated, some things aren't." Those things that are those that aren't complicated are much easier to to not be complicated by. And either the whale or Bobby, I'm not sure, said <laughs> he said I'm not quite following you. And Bobby said, Should we just have a sing song? The whale started getting so angry so, I do not sing and Bobby said yeah but the way you said that it sounded quite singy it's like I do not sing neither do I I I I I what on earth are you talking about I don't know. There's there's just so much going on at the moment. I moved somewhere new, you know, said Bobby. I moved somewhere new. I kind of don't really know my way around. Don't know how long this is going to last. And, you know, almost 
I feel stranded a bit. I mean, it's all right for you, Mr. Well. You don't know what it feels like to be stranded. The whale said, excuse me? Are you having a laugh? Are you having a giraffe? And Bobby said, a, a giraffe? What, what do you mean? It rhymes with laugh. Yeah. But you wouldn't use both though, would you? Huh? Well, you wouldn't use laugh and giraffe. You'd use one or the other, wouldn't you? Yeah, I suppose. Does it matter? No, but it's, if you're going to use a, like a rhyming slang word, you know, it's like, I like the look of her boat race. Face? You wouldn't, you wouldn't add face at the end of it. You'd say face or boat race or... Um, I better get on the dog and bone. Phone. You tell her, get on the phone or I've got to get on the dog. Well, people say the dog now, don't they? Don't even say dog and bone. So phone doesn't rhyme with dog. Hog, bog. Log. Uh, tog. Cog. Dog. Fog. Gog. Hog. Jog. Log. Mog. Pog. Quog. Rog. Sog. Tog. Fog, swag. What are you doing? What? Why did you just do that? We'll just go through the alphabet, trying to find words that rhyme with dog throughout the alphabet, with the og bit. But then going through the alphabet, you know, trying to find words. Yeah, but why? What do you mean? Well, you would, that just that took about a minute. You just you just started doing that randomly for no reason. No explanation, no introduction. Just, I mean, would you do that in real life? Bobby said no. The whale said, why? Bobby said, because I don't exist, do I? This is just a story. And the whale said, ha ha. And then Bobby said, oh, thank you. I'm glad I made you laugh. And the whale said, that was, that was sarcasm. Bobby said, oh, I don't really understand what that is. Sorry. You don't understand sarcasm? No. Okay, let me give you some examples. Uh, first of all, no, wait, wait a minute. Listen, I don't really care, said Bobby, in exactly the same voice as the whale speaks. It's a bit late, really, to uh, to change the voices, isn't it? Said the whale. Yeah, I think so. I think that should have been done at the beginning. Can't just start like, hello, me, me, me. Just a different voice. It would, it just get confusing. Yeah, unlike the, uh, <laughs> the sense that it all makes so far. That's an example of sarcasm. Oh. 
So you mean saying something that isn't true. So basically a lie. So a lie is sarcasm. So if I tell you that right now, Mr. Well, that the seagull on top of you has not got his one good leg inside your breathing hole that would be sarcasm because it's a lie you what get out of there and Herbert the uh, seagull he said no I'm not I'm going to finish what I started and Bobby said what what is he doing and the whale said you don't just 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 forget about it it's one of those um just one of those things you know one of what things well it's a bit of a strange thing basically when two people are in love yeah they sometimes uh, want to please their partner and Bobby said yeah I'm like that with the dog and uh the whale said you probably not that's probably not what we mean and he said uh, Bobby said oh yeah I know exactly what you mean I'm like that with a dog I'm always trying to stick stuff down his throat like that's what no, just sticks and stuff like that just to that's just that's cruel no not cruelly I chuck the stick first and then he he pings it back so you're not actually putting a stick down his in his mouth. No, he puts the. I chuck the stick, he runs at it, and he brings it back in his mouth. Well, it's not the same at all, is it? What would you expect? I'm seven. I don't understand the intricacies of verbalizing stuff. You know, I don't even know what the word is because I'm seven. Yeah, you do mention your age a bit too much. I mean, what are you going to be like when you get to 70 or 80 or 90? I mean, all you'll be saying is, I'm 90, you know, I'm 90, you know, I'm 90, you know, I'm 90, you know, I'm 90. That's all you're going to be saying. I mean, 90 year olds do it all the time anyway. But if you're doing it at seven, you're just going to be like, I'm 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. That's going to be your answer for every single thing. And Bobby said, why are you talking so quickly? And the whole idea of this is to start, you know, talk quiet and gentle and slowly and to make it slower as the recording carries on. And the whale said, listen, I don't play by your rules. I am the king of the ocean. And Bobby said, ah, nah, Aquaman is the king of the ocean and also the man from Atlantis who is also Aquaman kind of and what's the difference asked the whale knowingly he kind of knew the answer before he even asked it he, he, he winked for some reason and uh, but Bobby couldn't see it because he wasn't looking looking at the ocean with one hand raised up as almost like he was trying to part the waters like it's seen in the Ten Commandments movie that was on a few weeks back on telly and he said uh, well a man from Atlantis he used to live in Atlantis but now he lives in a swimming pool and it's got furniture and everything and he, he can live outside of the water for only for short periods of time and uh, 
but he's, he lives in a big swimming pool that's where he lives and he solves crimes and stuff like that okay an Aquaman oh Aquaman Aquaman is the king of the sea he can control the fish he can control the 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 fish he can make fish do things and he can um, control a fish well, he can't control me said the whale well Bobby said if he can control a fish he can control you can't he because you're a fish you what and he pulled he, he an arm that didn't exist suddenly appeared and pulled Bobby close to the whale's face and said oi don't you ever call me a fish well isn't that what you are I ain't no fish I'm a whale yeah but you're a fish how do you work that out Bobby said well you live in the ocean don't you well usually apart from when you're sunbathing today but I'm not sunbathing I'm stranded yeah you know what I mean no I don't I don't know what you mean I don't know or what do you mean I'm a I'm a fish because I live in the ocean well you live in the ocean therefore you're a fish if you lived on land you wouldn't be a fish but you live in the ocean therefore you're a fish ah oh, but I can't breathe underwater ok how long can you spend how long can you spend underwater oh absolutely ages in that case you're a fish I'm not I'm a whale you my friend or a fish and you know how I can tell it's because you smell like a fish there's no reason to be personal well, it's not personal it's just a factuality you smell like a fish I smell like a human Yeah, but it's still a bit rude, you know. I don't think we have to bring in smells into it. I mean, I can't actually smell anything at the moment. It's almost like my my air hole's blocked up. Oh, that feels nice. What? No, nothing, nothing, no. Carry on, Herbert. We're nearly there. So Bobby said, Lester, I've got to go now because... I can't think of anything else to say and the whale said oh please don't go I'm really going to miss you and Bobby said really and the whale said that was sarcasm another example of sarcasm of course I'm not going to miss you well why not well I think the question really should be why why would I but why wouldn't you because you're just annoying <laughs> you should be annoying I'm not annoying I've kept you company for the last hour nearly yeah but what have we let's be honest what have we got out of this encounter what are you taking away from it and what am I taking away from it Bobby said well I've got a poem ok don't start about a poem again because I can't take it and Bobby said you know what what said the well I just realised something what's that you're a whale Yeah. 
and whales can't talk. Yeah. So I think I'm going to go home. Bobby just turned round and walked away. And the whale just seemed very puzzled. This whole interaction. I mean, what possible point was there to any of it? It's like trying to... I don't know. It's... It's like trying... It is. This is like trying to teach a ferret the alphabet it's just or how to um, behave or how to be a good boy or how to be generous there's no generosity in him take 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 all the time take 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 And Herbert, who was standing on top of uh, the well, he said, uh, he said, James, which was the whale's name, he said, yeah, why didn't you ever tell him what your name was? Who? Bobby. I don't know, really. Didn't even come up. Have you told me as soon as we met? Yeah, I know, but you know, it's a different relationship, isn't it? Well, okay. I just found it weird that he told you his name, but you didn't tell him yours. Are you keeping it secret? Are you embarrassed? No, I'm not embarrassed. Well, tell me what your name is then. Say it out loud. No. The whale said, no, I'm not going to. And Herbert said, why not? And the whale said, because I can't remember what name you just said to me. And the seagull said, but I only just said it. And the whale said, I know, but I didn't think we were going to actually sort of keep using the same name. I completely forgot. That's partly the reason why I didn't give myself a name at the beginning of the story. Because just remembering Bobby, the whale, and the seagull called Herbert, that was enough information. Oh, said the seagull. Do you think this story is going to make it into uh, into a book? Do you think it could turn this into a book? And the whale said no. And the seagull said, why not? He said, because it's awful. <laughs> it was an awful story. It had no content. It had no purpose. There was absolutely, it was pointless. Yeah, but that is the point, isn't it? The point is to have a pointless story. I know, but it's it's a weird, it's a weird mind thing. It's kind of like, it's pointless, but that is the point of it. You're right. So didn't we accomplish what we were set out to do? Yeah, I suppose, I suppose. Should we go back? Could we go back home, shall we? And uh, Whale well, said, yeah, all right then. And he just rolled over, got up on his legs and walked back into the ocean and swam away. And as they swam away, they both looked back at the beach and wave goodbye 
Bye bye, Bobby. Bye bye, Bobby. Bye bye, Beach. Bye bye. Let's all go bye byes. A nice sleep. That brings us to the end of this most pointless story. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.